family friend told me about CBC. As soon as I started praying over this decision, I just felt like incredible peace over it. I've seen God's provision through finances, through passionate friends and community, and the profs who deeply care about each and every one of their students and what they're teaching. The classes are fairly small, which allows you to get to know the professors pretty well on a one-on-one -on -one level and they're all very open to having coffee with you and chatting with you about any questions that you have. It's a very tight-knit community and you get to know lots of people and there's really intentional relationships created and it's just really cool being around like-minded people who want to pursue God together and also have a great time. I came to Christ in my first year of CBC. Through coming to know Jesus, I've really saw my character develop into a person that more so aligns with who I want to be. So a person who's more patient, who's more humble, who's more kind to others. CBC is the place where I was given the chance to grow and really focus on growing. Not just learn about the Bible, but learn about how it applies to me in my life. It's given me the confidence to use my voice and to use my voice, especially as a woman in biblical studies. One of the big things I've learned at CBC is how to be vulnerable and that vulnerability is key to growing and building relationships. As a small school, you can't just be a part of one thing. Everything is interconnected and just able to be a part of everything that goes on at CBC and be interconnected with every aspect of it, every program. The community here truly is amazing. You get amazing relationships with your professors, with your friends that you're going to make here. For me as an athlete, with my, all of my teammates and my coaches as well. CBC offers the opportunity for young people to be fully known. And a big quote around here is to be fully known is to be fully loved. My time here at CBC has really transformed my faith. Coming here has forced me to be more practical in my faith, that it actually has to be lived out. Faith has to be something that's a part of everything. Our coaches here are really committed to building an amazing program, really developing strong Christ-centered athletes instead of just great athletes. We want to really be Christ-centered here at CBC. The level that you're learning about biblical studies here is quite high, but along with that, community is also really important at CBC. And so I found that while they were very focused on the academic side of learning about the Bible, there was also this emphasis of application and that I was able to take part in a community that was close. I really appreciated that I had both community and academics in one space. My name is Juliette Teeter and I am the program director of the counseling program here at Columbia. Probably a chai tea latte. Ooh, Bluebird by Alexis French. It's so interesting because in different seasons of my life, I've had different jobs that were my dream job. And I think sometimes we can get so caught up in trying to figure out what this one perfect job or career is for us. But in reality, most people will have many different jobs over the course of their life. Um, and the key is for you to know yourself, to know your strengths, to know how you're created and find work that allows you to use those strengths. Um, and so if you can do that, research in the field suggests that you'll likely have a very high degree of job satisfaction and performance and find meaning in whatever that work is. Um, so I guess for me at this point, um, I would pick something that uses my strengths, maybe a book editor for a publishing company. This is a four-year bachelor's degree in practical theology with a major in counseling. So that means that students get both a strong theoretical and psychological academic foundation. So whether a student wants to work with teens or adults um, in mental health, anxiety, or addictions, or maybe in church ministry, wherever they feel like God is calling them. Um, the internship provides them with an opportunity for immersive learning um, and work experience within the field. Um, and I think that is something really cool about our program, and I really love that. I would say get really invested. One thing I always say to my students as we start any course is you will get out of our course what you put in. And I think the same is true for our Columbia experience. There are so many ways to get involved on campus and student leadership and service projects. Um, and so I really encourage students to just really plug in. Um, they will get really cool things out of their experience at Columbia if they're able to plug into the community that we have here.
I play on the Columbia Bible College men's volleyball team here, and we are the only team in the Pac West that is a Christian team. So that has a lot of implications about how we act as a team and how our behavior really affects how people view our team as a Christian team. Every school that comes to play here, they come to play in front of the loudest and the largest crowd ever. Like, we have the best fans in the Pac West. So as student athletes here, it can be really easy for us to put our identity in our sport when it's more important to put our identity in God and who God says that we are. We really develop really strong relationships and the teammates that you know today will become your brothers. I think for people who are looking for a sense of belonging, I would say don't be afraid to chase it because God can do amazing things. My name is Matt Kaminsky and I'm co-director of Applied Leadership. And I am Curtis Kuby, co-director of Applied Leadership. You go. Americano with cream. I like Americano also, but no cream, no sugar, unless I want to treat myself and then I get a vanilla latte. The last song I listened to was Perfectly Loved by Rachel Lampa and Toby Mac. And for me, I, I don't know if I listened, but I definitely heard it, was something by Rihanna during the halftime show. Diamonds. Yes, probably. I think if I could have any other job in the world, I would like to be a cabinet maker. I like working with my hands and building things. And I would say water technician. I would say the Applied Leadership Program aims to develop authentic, transformational servant leaders. That's a good answer. Thank you. Yeah. I would say our program's for anybody that desires to learn more about themselves, uh, learn more about the influence they have, and learn how to steward that very well. Yeah, and I'll add just a piece. I think it's for anybody who wants to be a change agent in the world, to make a difference no matter where they find themselves. A business, a church, a charity, they're gonna make it. So I'll, I'll say what I love is seeing students light up and discover how Jesus has equipped them and called them to make a unique impact and difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Along with that, what I love is that it's not just theoretical in nature, mm -hmm. but the Applied Leadership Program is practical and applicable to no matter what a student then moves on to do. One piece of advice that I would give somebody starting the program was to be ready to learn more about who God has made you to be and to push into that to then serve and love and care for those that you may lead or influence in the future. And I would say be courageous because uh, a lot of people think, oh, I'm not a leader, I'm maybe 17, 18, 20, how, however old they are, and they think, uh, I don't know, that sounds a bit scary. And so. You know, just be courageous. Take that step of faith. Trust that God has made you unique for a purpose and lean into that. You don't have to have all the answers. Be I grew up in Manitoba, so I'm a prairie girl through and through. I came to CBC for a purpose of getting my counseling degree, and that's what I wanted out of it. But it's been so much more than that. It's been learning and it's been growing in myself and who I am and who the Lord sees me as. But it's also been growing in relationship. It's been growing in knowledge of the Bible. I came into a place where I didn't know anybody. I was suddenly struck with who am I? And the big question of wrestling with of where do I fit in? And so in coming to CBC and talking to people and seeing their passion for the Lord, I really developed my foundation of, no, this is what I'm choosing for myself. Hearing profs talk about like their faith and how they've wrestled has been really impactful and I've seen Jesus work. I've seen God's hand over it. My name is Jeremy Walker and I'm the Quest Program Director at the college. My go-to coffee order is an Americano no room. 
The last song I listened to was Carry Me by Need to Breathe featuring John Foreman. Honestly, I wouldn't choose another job, but I had to. If Quest didn't exist, I'd probably work with young adults in discipleship just in a different context. Quest is a place to be known, to be loved, and to explore what it means to follow Jesus wholeheartedly. Quest is for anyone who really wants to lean into what it means to follow Jesus and to become like him. It's for 17 to 22 year olds who need and want to experience the God who longs for them to live fully and freely. What I love about Quest is that uh, it integrates so many different components to life. It allows me to know and love students both in a classroom, in a one-on-one -on -one setting, uh, in a canoe on the top of a mountain. Um, and I love that we get to learn and grow together, often surprised by what God has already planned. A piece of advice I would give to incoming Quest students would just to come with your hands open. Um, be prepared. To, to respond with a yes to whatever Jesus brings your way. So Quest is a one-year outdoor discipleship program. If you're the type of person who is looking to be out in creation, to experience creation, um, to spend time with people who also want to grow in, in faith and relationship with God, then Quest is the perfect place to, to get all those things. Before I came to CBC, I was very independent and just thought I could do everything myself and didn't need anyone's help. The investment and the involvement of the Quest staff, they came out and said, like, we have chosen to love you before we got here. And they, they lived that out. And it was very cool to see and to walk with them through that year and still three years later being able to have those relationships and see that they're still invested uh, was just really cool to see. My name is Stacy Gleddy Smith and I'm the director of the Worship Arts program at Columbia Bible College. Uh, just a straight latte. Coffee and dairy should not be separated. Uh, psalm 3 by poor Bishop Cooper, who have recorded every psalm. I would be the lead singer for you two. Uh, we build lots of skills that are based on a deep and rich theology of worship uh, that views all of life as lived in response to who God is and what He does. Um, and that means decision making on a Sunday morning is based not just on personal preference, but it's based on the Word of God, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and care for uh, the discipleship of the congregation. But we also like things to sound cool. Our BA in Worship Arts is for people who love the church, who love music, uh, and who want to serve people. So if that's you, this is a great place for you. Um, if you are interested in those things but don't necessarily want to be a worship pastor, then you might consider our diploma instead of our BA. What I really love about the Worship Arts program at CBC is that we do theology first. And so we start with what then drives the rest of our decision making. Uh, and so it's a broad program, but it goes really deep at the same time. I would say get involved in teams on campus, get involved in teams in a local church, because um, the learning works best if you can apply what you're learning in an immediate context. Before coming to CBC, uh, I wrestled a lot with my own selfhood and self-worth and self-confidence. CBC is the place where I was given the chance to grow and really focus on growing. If I were encouraging somebody to come to CBC, I would focus on CBC's academic caliber. They're just way too many classes to count where I was just like weeping because I'd come to some amazing realization about who God is or like um, what that even means for myself and for others. 
Uh, just the level that you're learning about biblical studies here is quite high. So looking at where I am now, just in my master's program and aiming for higher education, I feel that CBC was a place that God was setting me up for where I'm supposed to go in the future. My name is Jerry Pauls and I'm the Program Director for Biblical Studies. I love to go for coffee, but to be honest, I'm not much of a coffee drinker. Sorry, I know that disappoints a lot of you. If you pulled open my Spotify, you'd uh, very likely find some Coldplay. Oh, dreaming. Um, I'd be a Formula One race car driver. I just watched Drive to Survive this weekend, so that's, that's that. My program is about the Bible. Uh, it's about learning to read and to understand and to hear God's Word and what it means for us in terms of our, our life and our vocation. The program's for anyone that loves Scripture and wants to dive into it in a deeply, thoughtfully, academically. Uh, for people that, that want to read and understand and hear what it says for them uh, in terms of their life and their vocation, whether that be for uh, pastoral ministry or for teaching or human services or just in the marketplace. Uh, I love the journey that biblical studies takes students on. Uh, reading scripture is always a journey and uh, it's a journey of transformation and to be to be part of that journey um, along with students and to see where that journey leads them is it's always the highlight for me personally. I'd say to make the most of it. Um, reading scripture is a communal practice, so to, to be all in in the community, to engage the community, meet with instructors, have conversations with fellow students. My name is Chris Clements and I'm the Program Director for Youth Work here at Columbia Bible. My go-to coffee order is a little bland, just medium regular is great, but it's not a reflection on my personality, it's just easy. Do you know what, the last song we listened to, my daughter is on a Taylor Swift kick, so it's that one about how she's the problem in the room, and I don't know what it's called, but it's definitely in my mind. The job I would choose is I would be a tour guide in the Northwest Territories on some of those northern rivers by canoe. In one sentence, the program here at CBC is about the gospel of Jesus Christ at work among young people. Our program is for students with a sense of God's call into ministry with young people in church, in parachurch, in camps and missions and beyond. In our program, we feel a sense of God's care for young people. So everything we're doing in class or even outside of class is guided by a sense of God's care, and presence with young people in our churches, parachurch communities, camps, and beyond. Youth ministry is a ton of fun, but we also want to rise to the challenge of meeting young people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So come ready to think, come ready to form a good community, and come ready to be shaped. family friend told me about CBC. As soon as I started praying over this decision, I just felt like incredible peace over it. I've seen God's provision through finances, through passionate friends and community, and the profs who deeply care about each and every one of their students and what they're teaching. The classes are fairly small, which allows you to get to know the professors pretty well on a one-on-one -on -one level and they're all very open to having coffee with you and chatting with you about any questions that you have. It's a very tight-knit community and you get to know lots of people and there's really intentional relationships created and it's just really cool being around like-minded people who want to pursue God together and also have a great time. I came to Christ in my first year of CBC. 
Through coming to know Jesus, I've really saw my character develop into a person that more so aligns with who I want to be. So a person who's more patient, who's more humble, who's more kind to others. CBC is the place where I was given the chance to grow and really focus on growing. Not just learn about the Bible, but learn about how it applies to me in my life. It's given me the confidence to use my voice and to use my voice, especially as a woman in biblical studies. One of the big things I've learned at CBC is how to be vulnerable and that vulnerability is key to growing and building relationships. As a small school, you can't just be a part of one thing. Everything is interconnected and just able to be a part of everything that goes on at CBC and be interconnected with every aspect of it, every program. The community here truly is amazing. You get amazing relationships with your professors, with your friends that you're gonna make here. For me as an athlete, with my, all of my teammates and my coaches as well. CBC offers the opportunity for young people to be fully known. And a big quote around here is to be fully known is to be fully loved. My time here at CBC has really transformed my faith. Coming here has forced me to be more practical in my faith, that it actually has to be lived out. Faith has to be something that's a part of everything. Our coaches here are really committed to building an amazing program, really developing strong, Christ-centered athletes instead of just great athletes. We want to really be Christ-centered here at CBC. The level that you're learning about biblical studies here is quite high, but along with that, community is also really important at CBC. And so I found that while they were very focused on the academic side of learning about the Bible, there was also this emphasis of application and that I was able to take part in a community that was close. I really appreciate that I had both community and academics in one space. My name is Juliette Teeter and I am the program director of the counseling program here at Columbia. Probably a chai tea latte. Ooh, Bluebird by Alexis French. It's so interesting because in different seasons of my life, I've had different jobs that were my dream job. And I think sometimes we can get so caught up in trying to figure out what this one perfect job or career is for us. But in reality, most people will have many different jobs over the course of their life. Um, and the key is for you to know yourself, to know your strengths, to know how you're created and find work that allows you to use those strengths. Um, and so if you can do that, research in the field to Good afternoon and welcome. It is my great pleasure to present to you the 2023 graduates of Columbia Bible College. Please remain seated as the faculty and graduates proceed into the auditorium.
Good afternoon and welcome. It is my pleasure to present to you the 2023 graduates of Columbia Bible College. You can be seated. Welcome graduates, parents, family, friends, alumni, Columbia board members, faculty, and staff. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Brian Bourne, president of Columbia Bible College, and it is my distinct privilege to serve as master of ceremonies for our commencement ceremony this afternoon. It's a great day to gather together for a celebration. And I extend a special welcome to the families of our graduates. I know that many fathers and mothers, sisters and brothers, grandparents, aunts, uncles, other caregivers and family friends have made a special effort to be here. And we also want to acknowledge those of you who are watching online. Welcome. We are so pleased to have you here to bear witness to this milestone accomplishment of our graduates. The entire Columbia community shares in your sense of joy on this day. Columbia and its predecessor schools have been in existence for 87 years. We partner together in ministry with the British Columbia Mennonite Brethren and Mennonite Church British Columbia Conferences. And we are grateful for their generous support in prayer, wisdom, and financial resources. To our amazing faculty and staff, we thank you and we applaud you for the many ways in which you have helped equip our class of 2023 to enter the vocations God has chosen them to pursue. We know that Columbia is a unique institution, not only because of our special mission, but also because of you. Students speak of your commitment to follow Christ, your relationships with each of them, your devotion to excellence in teaching and mentoring, and your untiring efforts to help them thrive. This is what makes Columbia the very special college it is. And so on behalf of our students, I salute and thank you. Today, we gather to celebrate a major achievement in the lives of our students. They have completed their course of studies and are now looking forward to the next step of the journey God has prepared for them. This afternoon, they will join the thousands of Columbia alumni who have been equipped for a life of discipleship, ministry, and leadership in service to the church and community. Our alumni are making a difference for Christ in churches, in business, in education, politics, construction, health services, agriculture, and in so many other fields. And they are doing so in Canadian communities and all around the globe. Later on in our ceremony this afternoon, we are going to honor two individuals, our alumnus of the year and our newest faculty emeritus. Both have provided outstanding service over a very long period of time. We'll say more later, but for now, I simply want to recognize their faithfulness through the years. Theological integrity is a quality that cannot be overestimated, and I hope you as graduates will emulate their examples. You who are graduating today, you are joining a special group of people, Columbia Bible College alumni. We are excited about what God has done, what he is doing, and what he will do in and through you. We believe in you, and we encourage you to remain in Christ, for as you do, you will bear much fruit. In the words of Jesus, remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. As you graduate this afternoon, remember God's word to you as you participate in the redemption, reconciliation, and transformation of God's world. I invite you to stand with me as I pray.
At the conclusion of, of, the, of my prayer, I would ask that you remain standing and uh, join our traveling ministry team in a congregational song. So let's pray together. Almighty God, we bow before you and give you praise and honor. For you are worthy. You are creator, sustainer, reconciler, savior, and Lord of all. We rejoice today over the wonderful accomplishments of discipline, determination, and self-sacrifice that have led to this moment for our Columbia graduates. As we stand before you today, we are excited to celebrate with our graduates, and we ask that you would grant us all a lifelong desire to know you, the eternal God, to pursue the truth with humility and a passionate commitment to love and serve you and one another. For our graduates, Lord God, we give thanks for the transforming work of your Holy Spirit who works powerfully within all who acknowledge Jesus as Lord. We are thankful for the many ways you have provided for them, protected them, taught them, and guided them. As they consider their Columbia experience, every joy, sorrow, and those moments of great satisfaction, may they be able to give thanks. And we pray, Father God, that you will continue to shape, stretch, and mold them into the image of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We worship you, Sovereign Lord, and ask you to guide our graduates into the path you have planned for them. Bless and protect them, watch over them, and anoint them with your Spirit so that they may walk in your ways and do your will. Lord God, our desire is that you would be honored and glorified through this ceremony. We are incredibly thankful for all you have done in our lives. And may the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen.
Thank you, Traveling Ministry team, not only for your ministry to us this afternoon, but for your ministry throughout the year. You may be seated. It's now my privilege to introduce John Best, Chair of the Columbia Board of Directors, who will bring, bring greetings on behalf of the board. John serves as the Global Ministries Pastor at Willingdon Church in Burnaby. Prior to joining the Willingdon staff, he worked for Mennonite Brethren Mission, or Multiply, for eight and a half years as regional mobilizer here in British Columbia. John and his wife, Christy, have three teenage children. I love what John communicated to us when he was first nominated for the CBC board. He wrote, one of the things that consistently invigorates me and brings me much joy is when I see a person discover their gifting and calling and take steps to pursue it. The Lord used my time at Columbia Bible College to do a lot of that shaping in my life. It was at Columbia that my faith became my own, rather than simply the faith of my parents. It was at Columbia that I had my first taste of global mission, which has turned, me in, it turned into a significant piece of my life. It was at Columbia that I started to discover that I was a leader and a worshiper. And well, it was at Columbia that I met Christy, the best gift he has ever given me. I'm eager, uh, eager to serve on the Columbia Bible College Board to be able to play some part in God's continuing to use this great team and institution to help people discover the Lord and how he has gifted and called them. John, we thank you for the important ways that you are supporting Columbia. And, uh, and I think few people actually recognize how much work it is to serve on the, uh, the board of, a, of an institution like Columbia. And uh, at this moment, actually, I'd ask if there are other board members present here today. I know, I think I've seen a couple of them. Would they please stand and let's acknowledge them with a, uh, with a round of applause. Thank you, John. Thank you, Brian. Nice hat by the way. <laughs> oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Traveling Ministry Team, for helping us focus our eyes and our hearts exactly where they need to be focused and need to stay focused. So I've been asked to bring greetings from the board. Greetings. Students, the board of directors is cheering for you and praying for you. Congratulations to those of you who are graduating. Faculty and staff, we are cheering for you and praying for you as you pour your lives into young adults who are eagerly seeking God. Parents, we are cheering for you and praying for you as you have eagerly or tentatively sent your children into this season of discipleship. Donors, we're cheering for you and praying for you. Thank you for seeing the high value of training up the next generation of the church. 
Thank you to each of you, students, faculty, staff, parents, donors, for your investment in the strengthening of individual lives and the strengthening of God's kingdom. As I've been cheering and praying for you, one passage of the Bible has been coming to mind consistently. It's Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. It says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is my prayer for all of us today. Let us recognize that we are part of a global community of Jesus followers, a great cloud of witnesses. Let us throw off burdens that hinder our action and sin that easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set out for us, saying yes to the invitations that God gives us, even when they seem hard. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus because Jesus died and rose again, we can live with hope and peace and purpose. It's not easy to be a follower of Jesus in our current Western culture. Uh, it's not supposed to be easy, I, I suppose. But I'm convinced that living with our eyes focused on Jesus is the very best way to live. Well, this is easier to say than it is to do. It's going to take utter dependence on the empowerment and shaping of the Holy Spirit. It's going to take community and accountability. It's going to take making costly choices. And we're going to need to consistently enter into worship. Because in the presence of the God of the universe, we are forever changed. What the world needs today is a whole crowd of people whose eyes are focused on Jesus and who are being consistently transformed because they have been in the very presence of God. These types of people will change the world. May each one of us be a part of that world-changing, Jesus-focused crowd. And so our board of directors will continue to cheer for you and pray for you as you seek to live out God's invitations in your lives. And again, a special congratulations to those of you who are graduating. God bless you. A number of years ago, we began an annual tradition at Columbia of honoring outstanding Columbia alumni. This year, our alumnus of the year is Warren Jansen, a diploma graduate from Columbia back in 1982. Due to his responsibilities as the international director of the SEND International Mission Agency, Warren could not be present with us today. In the program, you will find a, a short bio that tells you a little bit about Warren and what he has been involved in. He's, uh, Warren currently today is somewhere in Eastern Europe, I believe. However, we are very pleased that his wife and partner in mission, Dorothy, is here. Dorothy, will you please join me on stage? I want to read just a little bit of that biography uh, so that you know a little bit about Warren and Dorothy. Warren is passionate about being the presence of Jesus and bringing the message of Jesus to the unreached. Warren graduated from Columbia with a diploma in biblical studies in 1982. The Columbia Bible College Summer of Service program gave Warren his first taste of cross-cultural ministry and set him on a career path of mission work. Warren and Dorothy spent 16 years in Japan working in two Japanese church plants and one established church. They loved developing new ideas for meeting people and journeying together with them towards transformed lives under the lordship of Jesus. 
In 2004, Warren transitioned from field missionary with SEND International to become the organization's international director, leading global operations spanning over 20 countries and 60 different unreached people groups. I first got to know Warren back in 2013 and have seen, his, seen firsthand his commitment to Christ, to God's word, to his family, and to sharing the good news of Jesus with people all around the globe. Dorothy, thank you for being here, and I know you will pass our congratulations on to Warren for being recognized as Columbia's 2023 Alumnus of the Year. I'm going to present this award, we're going to get a photo, and then uh, we are going to have a response from Warren on uh, a video response on the uh, screens. So I think so let's move over here. Congratulations, graduates, on this special day. Uh, I'm sorry that I can't be with you, but I'm currently on a survey trip in the country of Georgia. Well, it's a real honor to receive this award, and I thank those who were able to make it possible. But it really reflects back on the school, for it was at CBC, in that fun and discipleship environment, that I was deeply challenged to love Jesus with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And it was at CBC that I was inspired to think beyond Canada and to think about those people in other parts of the world who just don't have access to everything that we have. So I can say that it was at CBC that I began this path of being the presence and bringing the message of Jesus to those who are beyond the reach of any local church. Being his presence, it's joining with the Holy Spirit to bring God's shalom, to take what is broken and restore it to wholeness. So people being reconciled to their creator, uh, love conquering hate, uh, the poor being empowered, um, the sick experiencing the healing presence of Jesus, where peace overcomes fear and joy washes over anxiety. So that is the, the invitation I leave for you. Wherever you go and whatever you do, Think through how you can be the presence and bring the message of Jesus to everyone you meet. Congratulations again, graduates, and enjoy the day. It is too bad that he couldn't be here because he is a really awesome guy. Um, but uh, great message again that Warren has left with us. At this point, John is coming back up to uh, recognize the outstanding service of someone I have on a number of occasions referred to as Mr. CBC. More importantly to me, this person has been a trusted friend and brother for decades. John, let me turn this over to you. So I have the honor of conferring to Ken Esau the status of faculty emeritus. Two questions you might have. Number one, what is faculty emeritus? And number two, who is Ken Esau? This is Ken Esau. I'll, I'll answer these questions for you. Go on over here. <laughs> okay. This is Ken Esau. Um, first question, what is a faculty emeritus? Well, it's a, it's a special recognition that the Columbia Board of Directors has the opportunity to confer on faculty that have served the, the Columbia community for at least 20 years. The main selection criteria are long-term exemplary service that has decisively strengthened the ministry and reputation of Columbia Bible College. So they will have demonstrated distinctive and sustained excellence in teaching, research, or program development and implementation. So, nice. It's our way of saying thank you, that we appreciate who you are and how you have served, and that we want to keep a strong connection over the years, even though your time at Columbia has ended. So the second question is, that's what faculty emeritus is. The second question is, who is Ken Esau? Well, you can see his bio in the program. A couple of key points are these. He grew up in southern Alberta. He's married to Karen. They have three adult children. 
joined the Columbia faculty in 1991 and taught for 31 years. He's an eager, involved member of the Life Center Church here in Abbotsford. And now Ken is serving with the Canadian Conference of Mennonite Brethren Churches in the role of Faith and Life Director. So Ken, God has used you and continues to use you in significant ways. Thank you for being faithful to his call and to his leading. You've had an impact on many people, students, faculty, staff, community members, and you've had an impact on me personally. So today I'll highlight two of the ways that you've impacted me. First, you brought the Old Testament to life for me in a way that had never happened before when I was a young adult. I remember sitting in your Old Testament survey class in 1992, so early on in your time, and for the first time having a clear sense of the, the narrative of the Old Testament and how it ties to the New, New Testament. You gave me a glimpse of the grand narrative of Scripture. I remember also being in an Old Testament theology class in 1996, being challenged to think more deeply theologically and to try to articulate and teach what I was learning in a way that could be grasped by others. I also somehow have entered my third theological degree with only minimal knowledge of Hebrew. And the Hebrew, <laughs> so your impact was significant, <laughs> the Hebrew that I know best is directly because of you. Shalom, mishpat, hesed, God's everlasting peace, God's justice, God's covenant faithfulness and love. So thank you. The second personal impact I want to highlight comes from a moment I'm sure you'll, you won't remember. There was a, a time when we both ended up running on treadmills side by side, side by side, just over here, um, probably a decade ago or something. You're a runner, I'm not. And you had a coaching comment to me as you watched my gait. You said, you should try to take longer steps. <laughs> which was not only good advice for me for running, but it's easy for me to translate that into coaching for life too, so thank you. So thank you, Ken, on behalf of the board of directors and on behalf of all of us here, the impact that you've had on the Columbia community and on multiple generations of students is very significant. We love you, we appreciate you, and having said all of this, I now confer on you the title of faculty emeritus. Guys, stand there. Get, it, get, it, get them have a photo. Karen, Karen, I, I wonder if you could stand. I, I think we need to recognize while Ken has been an exemplary professor here at the college. Um, I know he would say he's been able to minister the way he has been because of his spouse, Karen. So let's acknowledge Karen as well. Thanks, uh, John, for that. And I'm going to get, uh, in a second, I'm going to get all the graduates to stand up, and I want them to look around to all their financial supporters <laughs> and mouth the words, thank you, uh, if, you if they're here. If, if you've received scholarships, you can just look at, right at Brian Bourne and say that. Okay, so please stand with me. I'm going to say that to my wife. So she's been my financial supporter as well. So look around, say Okay, hey, you guys are great. All right, be seated. So, Mr. President, Columbia board members, Columbia faculty and staff, family and friends of all of you, graduates, and our most honored guests, you are our most honored guests today, the Columbia Bible College class of 2023. I count it a great privilege to have been invited to address you, celebrate you for what you have accomplished during your time here, and to send you out with, of course, a blessing. The shalom blessing. What other blessing is there? Amen? Amen. I feel a special connection with all of you graduates today. I've attended about 30 of these ceremonies. But this year I feel more like you, actually. Since I'm also saying farewell to Columbia, I'm looking out to the next stage of life post-Columbia. As I thought about it, I wondered what really important things I'm taking with me from my time at Columbia. What items am I bringing in my life backpack? for the next stage of life. And as I've been reflecting on that, 
I've been thinking about three things. I'm going to say them right now. A bowl, a Bible, and a life verse. So I have them here today in my trusty old backpack. So the first thing I have here is a bowl. And you might say, what are you doing with the bowl? I want to bring this bowl because it symbolizes my need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like refreshing water that I desperately need for my life. I've come to realize that everything in my life, everything that I do, actually as beautiful as I think it might be, actually is nothing without the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Okay, I'm glad you guys are into that amen thing. I heard somebody use it. Okay, so I'm using that. Now, one of my region professors, Rick Watts, told us in a class that we should never leave our house in the morning without praying for the filling of the Holy Spirit. That has deeply resonated with me. And I have tried to live that out ever since, praying that prayer to the Spirit to fill me every morning, praying that prayer for the Spirit to guide my words and actions as I left my office to go teach another class. Praying that prayer for the Spirit to work through every written word and spoken word in my life inside and outside of Columbia. The Holy Spirit is the spiritual presence of the resurrected Jesus with you and with me. If I want more of Jesus' presence, Jesus' character, Jesus' power, Jesus' wisdom, I need to invite whom? The Holy Spirit into my life each and every day. I need the bowl to be filled. John Mark Comer, uh, someone I've been following recently, his podcast said, you cannot give away what you do not possess. Without the Holy Spirit, I cannot love like Jesus. I cannot live in joy like Jesus or express God's peace like Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Will you put a bowl in your backpack and pray with me every day for the filling of the Holy Spirit? The second item in my backpack is a Bible. That may sound almost obvious and trivial and not worth mentioning, but my time at Columbia has reinforced my love for and dependence on the Bible. I'm so thankful that Columbia is actually still a what? A Bible college. I like these people in front. They're friends of mine. <laughs> Donate money so they don't have any debts. Okay. Yeah. I'm so thankful that Columbia is still a Bible college and that studying scripture in class and singing it in chapel is central here. We have faced some ridicule from some for calling ourselves Columbia Bible College. We have faced some many suggestions that we should get rid of the Bible word if we want to get more students and have more credibility in the public world. But more than ever today, I need the Bible. Did you hear me? More than ever today, I need the Bible. The Bible from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 is a recording of God's great Shalom Kingdom restoration story. I want to pray through the Bible. I want to meditate on the story to better understand the character and mission of God. I want to memorize more biblical texts so they become part of what the Holy Spirit can use to speak to me. Even though I do not want to escape from the present and, and what God is calling me to do today, I want to more than ever look forward to and celebrate the end of the story the full cosmic healing, the shalom restoration, the kingdom presence that Revelation describes will be fully here at the time when Jesus returns. I need the Bible to stop me from turning my eyes, uh, uh, I, to stop me from turning my eyes away from the kingdom story uh, to focus on a bunch of other stories where I'm the main character and my kingdom is the goal. The Bible contains the story that is the compass for my life. So I need the Bible more than ever. The Bible is not so much a book to be studied, but a Shalom Kingdom story to be joined. Anybody put that on Twitter, please? Sadly, I have seen many Christians, even some Columbia students, start with the Bible and then leave it behind. They seem to think they've moved beyond the Bible or become too smart for the Bible or so enlightened by the academic study of the Bible that they now see it as simply a human book or worse yet, an oppressive colonial human book. The Bible is taken out of the backpack and replaced by other books, seemingly more interesting books, seemingly more relevant books for our present cultural moment. If I get too smart for the Bible, I will become what Proverbs calls a fool. Even if I'm a smart fool, a fool with a bunch of academic credentials, maybe even a fool with a high paying and prestigious job title, not the one I presently have, but still a fool. I desperately need to take the Bible with me in my life backpack because it serves as both a compass and a guide. 
If you want to be part of God's big, beautiful, and amazing Shalom Kingdom story, don't let any other book be more central to you than the Bible. Don't let any other author be more compelling than the divine author speaking through all the human authors and editors that were part of the writing and collecting of scripture. Make the book your ground zero for theological and ethical and mission because this is ground zero for how you will counter Jesus and his Shalom Kingdom story. Will you put the Bible in your backpack? Thirdly, I'm taking with me from Columbia a life verse, a Bible verse that helps direct me through all the ups and downs of life. Up until a few years ago, I had a bunch of verses memorized, but I didn't really have a life verse. One particular verse that I could recite each and every morning, and it would keep me focused and headed in the right direction. But it felt like one of the OT survey verses that some of you had to memorize. It kept coming back to me day after day and challenging me. This verse confronted me about my values, about my anxieties, about my fears. It confronted me about my affections. It confronted me about what I spent my time thinking about. Confronted me and gently smacked me on the side of the head. But it also invited me to something big, beautiful, and amazing. More true and more valuable than anything else I could think about. It became a conversation partner in my head as I faced good moments and bad moments, as I faced big decisions. Like, should I really accept a new opportunity and leave Columbia? A place which I've totally loved for all these years. And small decisions like, do I want to volunteer to do garbage cleanup again in my neighborhood? At some point, I was saying this verse together with my students, and I realized it's become my life verse. It's even a New Testament verse. <laughs> but there's good things there too. A verse to recite, <laughs> Michael. A verse to recite in prayer each day. A verse to say when my heart wanders toward all sorts of good things, but not the best thing. I sort of wish Jesus could have given me a different verse, a, at least a less challenging verse. I mean, a life verse like, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. This is, of course, a great verse, although it's been misquoted terribly because of the word of shalom, and it should not really mean prosper here. But nonetheless, you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> or maybe I will never leave you nor forsake you, or delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. But these were not the, this was not the verse God gave me. If you're in my class, you would probably recognize pretty quickly that you know what verse this is. It's Matthew 6.33a. And Matthew 6.33a, say it with me. Seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And we could go on and all these things will be added to you. God's kingdom is big, beautiful, and amazing. It is what God is building and bringing. It's what Jesus in this verse commands us to seek when? First. This is what we should focus our eyes on each morning as we get up. We are citizens of this kingdom. This is our allegiance. This is our loyalty. This is our priority. So if you're tracking with me, you might be asking the question, what does it look like to actually seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness? The first thing is obviously, if you want to be a seeker of God's kingdom first, you have to begin with worshiping of the king of the kingdom. There's no kingdom seeking without worship. This verse reminds me that Jesus is firstly my king. He is the one in Matthew 28 who says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Only a king like this can overcome the powers of death and destruction. If I want to seek first God's kingdom, I need to begin each day with some form of worship of this. This could be simple as declaring Jesus as king and expressing how I want every word, thought, and action I do that day to be an offering of praise before King Jesus. But this is hard work. To worship King Jesus every day means dethroning everything else I want to worship. Dethroning my own kingdom, my own plans for how to live a beautiful life. You might not believe it, but some of our grads from previous years have moved away from seeking first God's kingdom. They're pointing to something else, that something else is not necessarily bad, but it doesn't involve King Jesus. And without King Jesus, there's no true life and life to the full. There's nothing as important in your post-Columbia journey, I would suggest, as daily bowing in front of King Jesus in worship. If you want to be seeking first God's kingdom and his righteousness in 20 years and in 50 years, make it an absolute unchangeable commitment to worship Jesus every day. The posture of a disciple is worship. 
So say with me, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. Second of all in this verse, to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness means I need to orient my whole life toward God's kingdom mission. God's kingdom has a driving mission, which is to bring God's kingdom to earth here fully as it is in heaven. This involves people being forgiven and redeemed kingdom citizens. It involves healing and restoration, overcoming all the powers of death, Satan, and sin in our world. It involves every knee bowing in front of this king and all kingdom citizens participating in his kingdom work in the world. I hope and pray that you are discovering, because of your time at Columbia, your kingdom calling. I often get discouraged. People say, what do you want to do after Columbia? A real question is, what do you think the king is wanting you to do after Columbia? Now, Columbia has been a part of it, but your kingdom calling isn't a job. It's not, it's not necessarily a calling to be a nurse or a teacher, an artist, a worship leader, or a pastor, although it could be part of it. A kingdom calling is an orientation and a vision for the future, to be an image bearer of the king in the world, participating in his mission. Say it with me, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. Thirdly, to seek first his kingdom as righteousness means that your character changes. My character has to change. I need to become what Galatians 5, and 23 says is the evidence of the character of Jesus in my life. Many of you have memorized it in my class. The fruit of the Spirit is... Amen. I, I go change your marks, bring them all up. Awesome. Some of you don't need that. Some of you are a little more desperate. I love you guys. Okay. But it also means that in all my ethical life, all my vocational choices, all my stewardship of creation, my possessions, my sexuality, my relationship with neighbors, everything else is oriented firstly toward King Jesus and his kingdom. It's attempting to adopt a principle like peace, love, or justice. It's easy to embrace vague principles, but it's a lot difficult, more difficult to embrace the king and the kingdom. Matthew 6.33 invites us into righteousness that reflects this king and this kingdom. So thirdly, say it with me, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. Fourth and finally, seeking first this kingdom and his righteousness means that I need to join a kingdom community that's focused on worship of Jesus, on kingdom mission, and a Holy Spirit character. I must admit there's times where I'm deeply disappointed in the kingdom community of the local church. But at the same time, I recognize that the kingdom is not a solo sport. If you want to play for the Bearcats in volleyball or basketball, some of you are Bearcats. I guess we're all Bearcats, amen? But if you play for the Bearcats, you know that you can't just email one of the coaches and express how you want to meet with the coach every other day and play volleyball or basketball with the coach. The coach would declare that if you want to be a Bearcat, you put on the jersey and you join the team. You work out with the team, you travel with the team, you sacrifice for the team, you celebrate with the team, you forgive those on the team who hurt you and you, they forgive you as well. You have no future as a volleyball or basketball player unless you join the team. This is the same with the kingdom. If you want to seek first God's kingdom as righteousness, you put on the jersey. You go to the practices. You hang out with the team. The kingdom is a team sport. Matthew 6.33, again, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. So this afternoon, I've shared with you three things that I want to bring with me in my life backpack as I graduate with you from Columbia. A bowl, a Bible, and a life verse. I am desperately in need of the Holy Spirit desperately in need of hearing more of God in the Shalom Kingdom story in Scripture, desperately in need of a powerful life verse to keep me directed toward King Jesus and the kingdom. I hope and pray that you will include a bowl, a Bible, and a life verse. Stand with me. I'd like to say a blessing of Shalom over you. For the last time, I have this privilege. And so if you want to actually put out your hands, and those of you in the crowd, if you would go toward the graduates, and if you want to receive it, some of you can receive, some of you can put out a hand for others. All right, graduating class of 2023, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you shalom in the name of Jesus for his glory. And all the people said, amen. Thank you.
I first got to know Ken almost 35 years ago, I believe. We spent a fair amount of time playing basketball together back then. We certainly wouldn't try and do that today. We would be getting injured far too often. But um, I want to thank you, Ken, for those inspirational and challenging words. And uh, I'm thinking, as many of you know, this is the conclusion of my time at Columbia as well. And I also feel like I am a graduate along with the rest of you. And so those words were very applicable to me. The words of Hebrews 13, 7 come to mind. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Now we will shift gears and hear from one of our own students, one of our own graduates here today. Our final address this afternoon will be delivered by Columbia's 2023 valedictorian, Laurel Harper. Laurel, why don't you come up here and join me? Laurel is a remarkable individual who has proven herself to be an outstanding student and leader. As the class valedictorian, she has demonstrated a strong commitment to academic excellence and has shown herself to be dedicated and hardworking. In addition to her academic achievements, Laurel has been awarded the Katie Jansen Memorial Graduation Bursary for her exceptional dedication to ministry and helping others. This $1,000 bursary has been designed to help students graduate with less financial debt and is a testament to Laurel's commitment to serving others. Throughout her time at Columbia, Laurel has been an active member of various teams and committees, including the President's Leadership Group. Having watched Laurel grow as a person and mature as a leader over the past three years, I can easily attest to her outstanding character I recently told her that if she needs an employment reference, I will happily supply one for her. She has shown exceptional leadership and discernment, and with her heart for the kingdom and her desire to serve, Laurel is sure to make a meaningful impact in whatever path she chooses, whether that be church, nonprofit organization, or the marketplace. It is truly an honor to present this award, the Katie Jansen Memorial Scholarship, or bursary, I should say, to you, Laurel, and we have no doubt that you will continue to excel and make a difference in the world. Congratulations. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm very honored to be here and to be uh, representing the graduating class of 2023 this year. It's a huge opportunity, and I'm just so proud of everyone who's graduating and thankful for everyone here supporting us as well. So like a lot of the graduating students and other students, you might have felt like we've been really, really busy lately. So I was kind of debating, you know, should I use chat GPT to just write this speech and just get it done? So stay tuned to see if I did or not. It's up to you to decide what you think I actually did. Um, but a little bit about me before I get into this. Uh, so I grew up in a loving Christian family at Timberline Ranch. Um, and so my family's over there. <laughs> uh, and so my dad's a director there. Um, and living at camp for nearly all my life really shaped me as a person um, and set in my heart a huge desire for ministry and service. In grade 10, my older brother was in grade 12 looking at colleges. And so being the keener that I am, I also was looking at colleges. And so I was already looking at CBC and thinking what my future could be like if I came here. And so then that year as well, I was working at camp and I was finally old enough to be a real staff. Um, and so that year, just watching the campers and how they grew and asked big questions about their faith and then also the other staff and just the impact that Jesus had in their lives and as they rededicated their faith to him, that really inspired me and made me want to continue to pursue my faith in another way beyond high school. So because of these things and all those opportunities growing up, I knew that I wanted to come here and pursue a degree in biblical studies, which I have done now. Um, and so, yeah, that's why I'm here, and I want to pursue future ministry beyond that. So if you read my bio in the program, if you had time, if you were here early, maybe you weren't, maybe you were, um, you may have noticed that I've done a lot of different things when I've been here, probably too many, um, but it's been a really enjoyable opportunity, and so I could tell you just about every single little thing I did, and you'd be like, wow, she's really crazy. Um, but I really want to just focus on the difference that God has made in my life here and just his faithfulness to me during this time. 
So more than anything, I just want to be an encouragement to you and to show you what Jesus is like and who he is to me. So the example that I want to show you today is from my time as a resident leader, or RL, which was in my second year. Um, so some of the students here, you've already heard me talk about this, but you get to hear it again because to me it was really impactful. So in my second year, I was a resident leader, um, and one of the things that we did as we gathered with all the different resident leaders is we had this exercise where we got these little boxes, which were really cute, thanks Neve, um, and we put, we just had little papers where we'd crumple it up and write down things that we were like worried about or fearful about or just that we didn't know what to do with, and so that was just our sign of like giving it over to God and handing over to God just anything that was on our minds. So throughout that whole year, I wrote down 10 different things and put them in this little box. And then I took it back home for the summer and I was away for that summer and then came home again. And when I packed to go back to college, I saw it sitting on my desk still. So I was like, oh, I totally forgot about this. I should open it up. And so as I did, tears came to my eyes as I saw how God had worked through every single thing in that box. I had forgotten what they even were. And in the moment, I knew that I was so worried about them and I didn't know how it was gonna work out because this was during COVID, everything was crazy. Um, but God worked through every single one of those worries and doubts. It was not necessarily just checking off my boxes and making my life perfect, because it's definitely not. Um, but I just saw how he worked through every single thing and brought me further and closer to him through that time. Nothing ever separated me from his love, and he was always there for me, not just to keep me going, but also to bless me. Now, there's many, many other examples I could tell you about my times at CBC and just how I've been so blessed to be here, and I've had God's faithfulness through me through so many things. So if you want to hear more, you can ask me later. Um, but for now, just think about that and how God has been faithful to you, and I encourage all the graduates especially to think about one, two, three, four plus years and just the way that God has been faithful in your life. So today, as we reflect on many hard years of work, learning, and growth that have carried us to this moment, and as we look back on what we've accomplished, we're filled with gratitude for all the teachers up here who have guided us, the family and friends who have supported us, um, and our friends and mentors who've encouraged us to become the best versions of who we are and who God wants us to be. There are a few people that I want to thank myself, and I'm sure that all of the graduates here have lots of people you also ought to thank, so reflect that and think about who you want to thank after this through this speech. Um, but for starters, I want to thank my brother, Ben, who is at school two years before me. And so when I showed up, I was very shy. You might think, wow, you're speaking in front of all these people. I'm a very shy person. Um, so I didn't make a lot of friends right away. But my brother was here already, and he was able to encourage me and just be there for me before I had a lot of friends in my life. So thank you, Ben. Um, and then also my parents just encouraged me to keep on going. This was my first time moving out, so that was quite a change of life. And I also had grandparents nearby who I could go to church with, and so that was really impactful in my first year. Um, and then later in my first year, I was able to start making some friends, and that's when social stuff started to happen. Um, and I also met the man who's now my husband, Drew, and so thank you to you for your support. It was not always a full encouragement, but he knew how to push back on me and also encourage me depending on what I really needed. Um, and then in my second semester, I also made more friends. And then over the rest of the journey, there's been so many more people here who I've gotten to know, and I'm so thankful for every single one of you. And also all the profs and staff and faculty and just the encouragement and mentorship that we've gotten. I hope that all the students here have been encouraged in some way by those people. Um, just know that you guys make a huge difference in our lives, and we'll be forever thankful for all of you. Uh, and so, yeah, I hope that all of the graduating students, you can think of all these people who have just been impactful and know that we couldn't have done this on our own at all. So to wrap this up, I do just hope you feel encouraged. Life beyond these walls might be uncertain, but I encourage us to be bold in our faith and put our hope in God, not ourselves or anything or anyone else. Remember always that God is faithful, even when we aren't, even when we don't understand or see him moving, even when things don't happen according to our plans or timing. God is always faithful. So a passage I would like to leave you guys with in conclusion is the end of Romans 8, 31 to 39, which I've also talked about in some of my classes at school, but it's been really impactful to me. Unfortunately, I can't dissect all of the context for you as I would love to as a biblical studies student, um, but just take it to heart and be encouraged by it. So verse 37 says, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Paul says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I hope as you reflect on your time at CBC that you can see how God has been and continues to be at work in your life. While not everything may have panned out as you expected, 
look where God has been moving both in the big and in the small moments. So fellow graduates, as we say farewell to this place and to one another, let us do so with hearts full of gratitude and joy. Let us embrace the future with confidence, knowing that we are equipped with the knowledge and skills that will enable us to make a profound difference in the lives of those around us and in the world through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So congratulations to all of my fellow graduates. Uh, thank you to all of our supporters and may the grace and peace of Christ be with us as we go from this place. Thank you and God bless. I'll invite you all to stand and as we continue through this uh, service, let's worship God together. song though darkness fills the night it cannot hide the light whom shall i fear you crush the enemy underneath my feet you are my sword and shield though troubles linger still whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side my strength is in your name for you alone can save you will deliver me yours is the victory whom shall i fear Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the god of angel armies is always by my side i know who goes before me i know who stands behind the god of angel armies is always by my side the one who Forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. I know who goes before me, I know who stands. 
stands behind the God of angel armies is always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the God of angel armies is always by my side the God of angel armies is always by my side. You may have a seat. Good afternoon. My name is Gil Duke. I have the privilege of serving as academic dean at Columbia, and now I have the privilege of making a few special award presentations. So I'm gonna ask each recipient, is gonna come up one by one as I announce them, and then you're gonna stay on the stage and we're gonna get a group picture afterward. The first one up is the Jake and Katie Gosen Award for Excellence, which is awarded to a degree student who has displayed exceptional leadership qualities in ministry, personal faith, and academics, and in the Columbia community and beyond. This is an award of $5,000. This year's recipient is Katie Rempel. So Katie, you can come on up to the stage. <laughs> Katie is, uh, is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Practical Theology from us and also a Bachelor of Science with a major in Business Management from Indiana Wesleyan University at the same time, over the same span of time. So Katie is the first of our students to graduate from this dual degree program which allows students to take online courses at IWU alongside of our courses and get two degrees side by side. You should know this requires a lot of self-motivation and discipline. If you've ever taken online courses, you understand this. One of the joys of hearing Katie share about her experience has been the way she's been able to connect her biblical theological studies to the world of business management. So I'm gonna read a quote from her. I view business, she says, as an entrepreneurial pursuits as an opportunity for me to utilize my strengths in creativity, entrepreneurship, and leadership for furthering God's kingdom in the world. This is the kind of integration that I think we all long for as faculty in our own lives, and certainly for in the lives of our students. Throughout her time at CBC, Katie has demonstrated excellence at whatever she has put her hand to. Student leadership, campus rec, Vespers. She's also started a home business on the side, so you can ask her for about her homemade kombucha. So this award also celebrates academic excellence. I need to tell you, Katie's done all this with a cumulative GPA of 3.86, and she'll be finishing up her internship this summer and hopes to start her own business. So, congratulations, Katie, we're very proud of you. All right, next up, every year Columbia recognizes grads who have achieved academic distinction and exemplify Christian character and leadership ability. Three different awards will be given. First is the Delta Epsilon Chi Award. Uh, so the faculty nominates students for membership in the honor society of our accrediting body, the Association for Biblical Higher Education. This award recognizes academic achievement, Christian character, and demonstrated leadership ability. In Romans 16, Paul talks about someone named Apelles, and he uses this way of talking about him, tested and approved in Christ. And the three Greek words that are translated approved in Christ begin with the three Greek letters, Delta, Epsilon, Chi. If you care about the footnote, that's what it is. All right, so with the following recipients of this year's Delta, Epsilon, Chi Award, please come forward, Benjamin Papp and Kobe Hutchinson. We're gonna make it work. Second award is the Governor General's Award, which was established in 1873, which recognizes students who have achieved the highest academic grade point average. So on behalf of Her Excellency, the Right Honorable Mary Simon, Governor General of Canada, 
I am pleased to announce this year's recipient, Benjamin Papp. Third and finally, the George Schmidt Leadership Award is presented to two students who hold a GPA of 3.3 or higher and have demonstrated outstanding Christian character and leadership while contributing significantly to the Columbia community. This year's recipients have been involved extensively in leadership both on and off campus and have been exemplary in modeling servant leadership. They're also masters of efficiency because they're already on the stage. Kobe Hutchinson and Katie Rempel. Finally, I'm going to ask Laurel to come back on the stage because we forgot to give you a plaque. So you're going to get it right now for the award that Brian's already announced. So come on up here. This is the Katie Jansen Memorial Scholarship. All right, we've come finally to the much anticipated part of the ceremony, the conferring of degrees, diplomas, and certificates. We good? All right. Well, the grads are gonna receive what looks like a nice piece of paper. They represent, of course, a lot of hard work, commitment, and perseverance, which you're all demonstrating too, just by enduring all this from the stage. Well done. It also represents the less tangible rewards of a Columbia education. There's like things like friendship and community and things like confidence, vocational awareness, personal and spiritual transformation. At Columbia, we are committed to the task of integrating our core beliefs within a wide range of practical ministry contexts. We're convinced that Christian education needs to make connections between the Bible and the unique challenges and opportunities of 21st century discipleship. So grads, congratulations on your hard work. Our prayer is that your efforts here at Columbia will bear fruit in the years ahead in your personal lives, in your families, in your churches, and in the tasks God calls you to. So this year we have 136 graduates. It's a big class. There's 40 degree graduates, 27 diploma, and 69 certificate grads. Just a note before we begin, we have a photographer up front here who's going to take photos of each grad. Those will be made available to you afterwards, but if you want to come up with your phone and do it on your own, Come up this aisle right here. There's a few uh, empty spaces in the front where you can camp out and wait for that perfect moment where your son or daughter is walking the stage. You're going to have to time it just right, but I'm confident that you can do it. Please hold your applause until all the certificate grads have crossed the stage, and then we should be able to get this done in good order. So certificate grads, are you ready? Certificate grads, would you please stand? So you can begin. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you and these witnesses, the candidates for our one-year certificate program. This year, we present 61 certificates from our one-year discipleship and faith formation and vocational programs. There are four in total. The first is Columbia One, which is a flexible one-year program that allows students to take foundational Bible and theology courses and to pursue a, maximum, a maximally flexible program with lots of elective space so they can chase their areas of particular interest. The second is our Educational Assistant Certificate, which is a career training program for EAs who end up in private and public schools in Abbotsford and beyond. The third is our Emergency Rescue Technician Certificate, which combines industry standard first responder training and adventure tourism training alongside of our core curriculum. And the fourth is Quest, which is a cohort-based discipleship program that combines outdoor expeditions with classes, mentoring, and leadership development opportunities. 
So these are our four programs. So we're going to call you up in order. Graduating with a certificate in Christian studies, and also known as Columbia One, Tyson Baker. Yeah. Evan Byer. Noah Bridge. Cassidy Ewert. Tanisha Fair. Alyssa File. Madison Kaufman. Christina Martinson. Just a reminder, you're not supposed to be clapping, but I'm letting you get away with it. Okay. <laughs> Tina Monkman. Jalen Audison. Hannah Richmond. Quinn Scott. Mackenzie Unger. Eden Weeb, also graduating with an EA certificate. Tiana Whistlink. Next up, the graduates with an Educational Assistant Certificate. Natasha Kluelt. Sarah Dreyer. Tiana Hudema. Casey Lionhorst. Oh, Samantha DeWitt. Yasmin Munsef. Cassidy Shaper Cotter, also graduating with a diploma in general studies. Kylie Stell. Melody Thompson. Elizabeth Wilson. <laughs> Graduating with our Emergency Rescue Technician Certificate, Leah Bright Cruz. Liam Cochran. <laughs> Kean DeVries. Maya Elgersma. Mitchell Harinchuk. McKenna Lane. Nathan McCallum. Graduating with a certificate through Quest, Sarah Abrahams. Yeah. 
Eli Berg. Trinity Bailey. Samuel Bickle. Anthony Enns. Logan Fair. Kayla Ganyu. Ethan Grassmeyer. Tori Klapstein. Simone Conrad. Anna Magwood. Allison March. Tegan McCammond. Sarah McDonnell. Talicia Patterson. <laughs> Jesse Peters. Levi Rorda. Kayla Savage. Joseph Sawatsky. Michelle Sawatsky. Atticus Schellenberg. Kendra Schauer. Joshua Stahl. Peyton Huguenets. Simon Verbeek. Aiden Workington. Larissa Wildachenko. Okay, you guys have been pretty subdued. So we're, we're gonna get a little bit of noise here in a moment. Certificate graduates, would you please stand? Now we got these really cool tassels, right? So here we go. As a symbolic gesture of the transition to your new status as graduates, we invite you to move the tassels from the right side, and I'll even help you here, right side to the left. Yes. That's it. Make a little noise. That's it. So, <laughs> last time I get to say this. Now, you guys got to keep standing. You got to keep standing. Here we go. Because I, you know, I got to use this. By the authority vested in me by the province and board of directors, I now confer on you the rights and responsibilities of the certificate you have earned at Columbia Bible College. Ladies and gentlemen, the certificate graduates of 2023, one more round of applause. All right.
You may be seated. Next up, our diploma graduates. Are you ready? Diploma grads, would you please stand? Well done. So these are our graduates of our two-year diplomas at Columbia. This year we present 18 graduates from our two-year diploma programs, which are designed to help students develop spiritual and character formation, a Christian worldview, alongside of a service and ministry orientation. Most of our diplomas also ladder into our degrees, so these people are either done or halfway there, depending on who you ask. Okay. First up, graduating with a diploma which majors in applied leadership, Jackson Huang. Jarrett Massey. <laughs> Nadja Reimer. <laughs> Emma Van Kuyk. <laughs> Graduating with a diploma in Biblical Studies, Brianna Grando. Martin Grindel. Ashish Kumar. Delaney Rigier. Graduating with a diploma in general studies, Annika Weeb. <laughs> Graduating with a diploma in intercultural studies, Josiah Cullen. <laughs> Graduating with a diploma in outdoor leadership, Heather Belanger. <laughs> Nathaniel Brew. <laughs> Anna Campbell. Graduating with a Diploma in Social Entrepreneurship, Stephanie Campbell. Kendra Espizel. Shiloh Tates. Graduating with a Diploma in Worship Arts, Joa Bargan. Just about all back to their seats. Yesterday during rehearsal was a bit of a challenge when we were trying to uh, stand in unison. So maybe we can do a little better today. Diploma, diploma graduates, a little bit of a challenge there. Can we go? Please stand, diploma graduates. And now it's your turn. As a symbolic gesture of the transition to your new status as graduates, we invite you now to move the tassels from right to left. Woo! (laughs) 
And by the authority vested in me by the province and board of directors, I now confer on you the rights and responsibilities of the diploma you have earned at Columbia Bible College. Ladies and gentlemen, the diploma graduates of 2023, let's give them a round of applause. And you may be seated. And finally, our degree graduates. We're very proud. Will you please stand? This year we present 40 graduates from six majors. Their program of studies has included 126 hours in total including studies in, in Bible and theology, general studies, as well as experiential learning courses. In addition, each student has completed or will complete an internship. Some students have also included, sorry, completed a minor consisting of 18 credit hours. Some have the words great distinction after their name, which means they have a cumulative GPA of 3.9 or higher, while those with the word distinction have a cumulative GPA between 3.7 and 3.9. They will also have a few absentees today who will also be noted. I have to say the next bit, final semester grades may yet impact whether this distinction that you get today actually holds into the future. First, graduating with a BA in Practical Theology, majoring in Applied Leadership, Samuel Cleary with a minor in Intercultural Studies. Emily Rogers, with great distinction. <laughs> Jesse Sonnenberg, with distinction. <laughs> Travis Spencer, also graduating with a diploma in social entrepreneurship. <laughs> Cody Stefik, also graduating with a diploma in, in, in social entrepreneurship. Next up, graduating with a BA majoring in Biblical Studies. Danny Friesen with a minor in Intercultural Studies. Lorel Harper, with great distinction, also graduated with a minor in church ministry. Kobe Hutchinson, with great distinction, also graduating with a minor in church ministry. Joshua Carrot, in absentia, with a double minor in youth work and counseling. Shannon Lang, with distinction, with a minor in Bible teaching. Brett Matthews with a minor in counseling. <laughs> Rianne Murdoch Strohshine with a minor in church ministry. <laughs> Benjamin Papp with great distinction with a double minor in applied leadership and Bible teaching. Hannah Weens with distinction with a minor in youth work. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful with a minor in church ministry. Yeah. Graduating with a BA in practical theology, majoring in counseling. Gerald Ayusin with a minor in biblical studies. Trinity Iman with a minor in youth work. Yes, Jessica Frechette. <laughs> Megan Hannett in absentia with great distinction. Michaela Laboon. <laughs> Chris.
Christopher Lechman with distinction. Cassidy Lowen with great distinction and a minor in worship arts. Matthew Matze. Hannah Mears, also graduating with an EA certificate. Brittany Reimer. Emily Rennert. Joshua Singh. Kate Singleton with distinction and a minor in Biblical Studies. <laughs> Abigail Workington. <laughs> Kelsey Weeb with distinction. <laughs> Laura Wheeler with distinction. Graduating with a BA in Practical Theology, majoring in Intercultural Studies, Sarah Archer, with distinction. <laughs> Chelsea Clausen. <laughs> Bethany Lowen, with a minor in Counseling. Jennifer Mascardo with great distinction and a minor in youth work. Jared McDaniel with distinction in absentia. Graduating with a BA, uh, sorry, a BA in intercultural studies, Madeline Thiessen in absentia. Graduating with a BA in practical theology and a Bachelor of Science majoring in business management from Indiana Wesleyan University, Katie Rempel with distinction. <laughs> Graduating with a BA in practical theology, majoring in youth work, Grant Kierlich. <laughs> Jonathan Schiffner in absentia with distinction. We'll just wait here until they all get back to their seats. What a great looking group, though. We got to say that, eh? Look at that. Degree graduates, would you please stand? Look at that. Way to go. As a symbolic gesture of the transition to your new status as graduates, we invite you to move your tassels from the right to the left. And by the authority vested in me by the province and the Columbia Bible College Board of Directors, I now confer on you the rights and responsibilities of the BA degree you have earned at Columbia Bible College. Ladies and gentlemen, the BA grads of 2023. Please stay standing. And would the uh, diploma and certificate graduates also stand? Let's give them all one final round of applause.
seated. Well, it's with a sense of both sadness and thankfulness that I come to this next moment in the program. You all know by now, because Brian has said it, that he is very near the end of his term as president of Columbia Bible College. And so I said I come with both sadness and thankfulness. I'm saddened because, Brian, you are a gifted, godly leader, and your presence in the day-to-day -day of Columbia will be deeply missed. And I come thankful because you have been an enormous gift to the Columbia community. Brian joined the faculty team in August 2004 as the Director of Intercultural Studies and for eight years poured wisdom into the lives of a generation of missional leaders. In 2009, he completed a Doctor of Theology degree in Missiology from the University of South Africa. And then from December 2012 until now, Brian has served as President of Columbia. The impact that you have had on students, Brian, has been enormous. And there was a season of several years when I got to see regularly the impact you had as a teacher. I had the joy of serving with the, the Multiply Trek program, and you would come and teach people preparing for their various mission assignments. You're not only a gifted communicator, but you also have a storehouse of transformational insights. I remember really clearly a session you taught on cross-cultural communication. And you talked about using proverbs of a people group to help understand their basic worldview. And I may have copied this teaching point into subsequent trainings that I did, so thank you. <laughs> so Brian, thank you for your leadership at Columbia. We all thank you. And Teresa, is Teresa here today? She is. Yeah, Teresa, can you stand? I don't know where you are. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, I know that the two of you view ministry as a couple, as a team venture, and so thank you, Teresa, for enabling Brian to serve so wholeheartedly in this role. As you transition into this next season of life, whatever it may hold, keep your eyes focused on Jesus, your heart open to people, and God will keep using you in mighty ways. I'd like to leave you with a couple of verses from Hebrews 13. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So thank you, Brian. God bless you. sing now ah yeah sorry that's right we are traveling ministry team thank you you may be seated oh do you want them to keep standing keep please keep standing Close like no other. I've 
known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, I have lived in the goodness of God.
I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen, and you may be seated. First of all, thank you to the many who have worked together to make this day such a special one as we have celebrated our graduates. Let's say thank you. And a few announcements. First of all, graduates, you are now officially Columbia Bible College alumni. And this is a very auspicious title that has been bestowed upon you. It comes with great responsibility and a number of perks, which include things like free entrance to all Bearcats games and complimentary coffee in the calf. Does it get better than that? I don't know. And I need to also remind you, this is not a time-limited offer, but this is for the rest of your life. So congratulations. And don't forget to go to the Columbia website to register for your alumni card. And then secondly, graduates, when you are done with all your picture taking and visiting, please return your gowns and your stoles to room 109. Please aim to have them back there by 5 p.m. at the latest, okay? And you may keep your hat, your tassel, and your folder, okay? Immediately following this program, we are hoping that all of you will join us for a stand-up reception in the student center dining room just over the way there next door. Uh, please note that there will be designated tables with gluten-free options for those who need those. And then there will also be several photo booths located in a, different, a few different locations. And we encourage you to uh, use those to just record some of the memories and some of these last moments together with your classmates. Now I know we have already been giving you blessings all evening and we've just sung a blessing over each other. But graduates, we have yet one more blessing that we would like to send with you as you move from here and continue to walk out the call and purposes of God in your life. And it's a blessing adapted from Romans chapter 15. So all graduates, please rise to receive one final blessing. Graduates, may the God who has given you endurance and encouragement throughout your time at Columbia, the God who has gifted you with a community that has aimed to embody the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, the God who has taken this motley group of individuals and from it created this community who with one mind and one voice have made it their life goal to glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. May this same God of hope who has worked in such transformative ways in you, continue to fill you with all joy and peace as you step into your next life chapter. And may you trust in him wholeheartedly, unconditionally, 
so that you may continue to overflow with joyful hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.